I really do love you. I love how you look, how you perform, how you feel in the hand. And that really is true. I absolutely have fallen in love with the Fujifilm X20. And let me explain why in this video, why I really do love this camera. Now going back about a year or so, I actually had the Fujifilm X10. And I loved that camera too, but it did have its problems. So I divorced it, I got rid of it. It had specs in the lens, it had the white orb issue, and after swapping it out a couple of times, I decided enough was enough. But then when Fuji announced the X20, I was super excited to get it in again. And that's because sometimes you wanna just pick up a camera without worrying about what lens you've got on it. Now, I test cameras on a daily basis on the Geekanoids channel, and I've got at my disposal an Olympus pen, and I love experimenting with different lenses on that. I've got Canon EOS digital SLRs, and again, I select the right lens for the job when I'm using the Canon. But sometimes I just wanna pick up a camera and not worry about what lens is on here. And with the Fuji X20, it's got a built-in lens, 28 millimeters to 112 millimeters, that has got some superb optics in it. And the actual clarity of the photos I've been getting from this are just brilliant, really, really nice. You can use this in sort of a standard mode or in different film simulation modes as well. And the JPEGs that this throws out are just sublime. Great detail, great coloring, and they just sort of have that feel about the finished photo that you really do fall in love with. Now I should mention that this looks slightly different to what you might think a X20 would look like. That's because I've added some little bits on this. Uh, this is my own camera, so it's not a review product, and I spent a little bit of money on a few accessories. Now I will put links underneath this video to what accessories these are, but let me just stand up and give you a closer look. Now the first one, it doesn't normally come with this lens cap. This lens cap is just 99p off of um, eBay, I think this one came from. And then we've got this uh, metal lens hood around the outside. And this was off of Amazon. I think it was about seven pounds, six or seven pounds, something like that. You can unscrew it and it's also got an, a second part. So it comes in two parts that you then screw onto the uh, lens. Let me just remove, can I remove that? There we go, let's just remove that so you can see the next section. So this part that's remaining on the lens, when this comes off, this part here, the bit with the thread on, that's part of the lens hood. And then right on the front, this is just a UV filter. Again, I'll put a link to this one in the video description, and I purchased that just to give a little bit of extra protection to the lens. And then you can see the Fuji lens living behind that. So that's why I added on, and I really wanted the lens hood. The official Fuji one is round about 50 to 60 pounds for the X20. It comes with a filter and a, a, a sort of front lens cap as well. But I went the cheaper route and just bought separate bits and saved myself about sort of 30 or 40 pounds. Now, the actual lens mechanism, while I'm standing up, I'll show you this. You can see it says off on here at the moment. To turn the camera on, you actually just rotate the lens and as it comes out, it clicks into that 28 millimeter position and switches the camera on. And then you can go all the way round to 112 millimeters. So very, very smooth as well. Very smooth for zooming. It is a pleasure to use for that uh, sort of smooth, uh, sort of manual zoom feature. Very, very cool. Back to the actual camera itself. So we've got all the controls you're ever gonna want. We've got little pop-up flash on the top here, like so. Show you that close up. So we've got the built-in flash, we've got hot shoe on top, we've got control dial here for the different modes, we've got a shutter button, which you can put a cabled shutter release on, and then we've got exposure compensation on here as well, all on the top plate. So really, really great that you've got everything you need on that top plate. And then round on the back, we've got all of the controls you're gonna need, including an extra control dial up the top here, and a quick menu button as well, just down in this bottom corner. So you can access the, the features or, or the, the menu features that you need to access quickly using that Q button. So everything works really well with regards to the placement of the controls. And apart from that, we've got 
a really nice screen for composing your photos. Let me just take this lens cap off. You can see me in the screen. Hello. And um, you can use that screen, no problem at all, in direct sunlight. But you'll also notice that just up by my finger, just here, is a viewfinder. And this is an optical viewfinder, but it's also like a hybrid viewfinder as well. And the reason I say hybrid is because it overlays the information you need regarding things like uh, shutter speed. Let me just hold it up to my eye. And it really is nice. So we've got the overlay of all of the information we need on this viewfinder. So it works really, really well. And I absolutely love the fact that we've got that information. Let me just pop it around into P mode. So I've got things like shutter speed and ISO, etc., all displayed within the viewfinder. That is absolutely brilliant. I love the fact that it overlays that. It's also nice and fast as well. Hitting focus, I'm just moving around here. So we've got focus. You can hear how fast and responsive that is. It is absolutely brilliant, very, very responsive. One of the lacking things, and it's sort of lacking, but then it also makes up for it in another way. Apart from taking photos, which you'll really, really enjoy with this, it does offer up 1080p video. And one of the highlights of the video feature is the bit rate. It actually captures at 36 megabits per second. So that exceeds the normal sort of 24 megabits or 28 megabits per second of other cameras. So you'll get a lot more maybe detail and dynamic range that you can pull out of your video capture. The disadvantage of the video mode is there's no dedicated video button on here. So if you're in P mode or you're in shutter priority or aperture priority, you cannot quickly shoot some video. You can't do it. You have to switch the mode dial round on the top until you hit the video mode on the top dial there. And when you're in that video mode, you then actuate or stop and start video with the shutter button. <sighs> so I didn't like the way they implemented that. That's a big shame, a big, big shame. Um, so the video mode is very lacking uh, on, in that respect, the fact that you can't use perhaps full manual mode and then start shooting a video. So I was disappointed with that. But it has also got, apart from that high bit rate, some other tricks up its sleeve. Let me just turn this off, save a little bit of battery. It has got some other tricks up its sleeve. And that's the fact that with the internal microphones, you can adjust the audio level, but you can also plug in on the side here. We've got the uh, little USB port on the top there. Uh, you can plug in an external microphone. Now that does come with a little bit of a trade-off in the fact that you can only plug in a Fuji microphone because the Fuji microphone uh, comes with an adapter which adapts it to a three and a half millimeter audio jack from that USB port. I tried purchasing a cable to adapt it and it was the wrong size. So it's obviously a different, it's obviously like a proprietary connection in there, which would then allow you, if you purchased the Fuji microphone, which is about 90 pounds or 99 pounds, that would then allow you to use any external microphone in theory, because then you could just use perhaps a Rode VideoMic Pro I've got one sitting here actually. And once you've got that adapter that comes with the Fuji microphone, you could pop this on top, like so, plug this into the adapter, and then you've got a really cool, compact uh, video machine at 36 megabits per second with some really nice optics. And it does actually produce really nice video. You would have seen uh, my HD video test of this to see how it performs. So. It's got some good points, but they've done it in a little bit of an awkward way when it comes to video. But the actual results are really nice. I also found that during video, you couldn't invoke manual focus. So there's a switch on the front here. So we've got autofocus, single, continuous, or manual focus. When I was in video mode, it seemed to actually not make any difference what position I put that switch in. It seemed to continually focus. But thankfully, it didn't hunt for focus too much. It still did a little bit, and you'll see that in the video test. So there still was a little bit of hunting, but not too much. I just would have liked to have been able to hit this into a single focus mode perhaps. So it just focused once and then it stayed there, locked onto that focus, but it didn't. Um, what I didn't try, and I might try this in the future and I'll share with you the results, is you can put it into manual focus and still focus using the AE 
uh, sorry, the AFL button on the back. So you can still use this to hit focus. So I might experiment with that a little bit and see how that works. But as a whole, battery life as well, really good. Actual feel of it, it's a really solid camera, built like a tank, very, very solid. The actual photo results, brilliant. Video results, brilliant. Really enjoy using it. I do love it. I absolutely love it. Love the camera. Fujifilm X20. I've fallen in love with it. Don't have to worry about changing lenses. Pick it up and go and get brilliant photos. I haven't even used RAW on it. The JPEGs are easily good enough for me to use. And I love all of the controls, all easily accessible. Brilliant, brilliant camera. And I'm glad it's mine. I love this. So thanks very much for watching. If you've got any questions about the Fujifilm X20, leave them in the comment section below. Hit that like button. I'll see you all in the next one.